College basketball. Now, you know I'm all in on this. Have you paid attention at all this week? Well, yeah. Okay. Um, the Kansas-Kansas State fight on Tuesday night. This was, it, for anybody that didn't see, and I don't know how any of you would not have seen, if you were a sports fan, you would have caught on to this. The Kansas State Wildcats were getting blown out at the very end of the game. And they went to steal the ball and try and make a layup at the very end of the game. And I'm talking final seconds here. This same thing happened to Kansas earlier in the year. Monmouth was down by like 50 and went up behind the point guard who was just trying to dribble out the clock and stole the ball, ran it down the court, and slammed it with no time left on the clock. Now, Kansas State was down by 20 in this game and tried to do the same thing. And Silvio De Sosa decided he was not going to have that this time, and it got ugly fast, really, really fast. Um, De Sosa picks up a, a bar stool or whatever that's sitting on the end of the court. He picks it up like he's going to hit somebody with it. Now, he didn't ultimately hit anybody, but, I mean, there were multiple punches thrown, all this kind of stuff. Dudes uh, kicking dudes while they're on the ground. And, that's and so it's cheap. In, it's in the handicap section. Yep. I mean, and it, like, it's basically in the stands with spectators right there. Uh, this was an ugly, ugly situation. Uh, first question, does DeSosa deserve to come back? Obviously, he had all the NCAA stuff going on. Uh, he was suspended I, first last off, year. First off, I can't believe this kid's playing at all. How Wiseman at Memphis got approved and then not approved later, had to fight for his appeal, but because they tried to play him, they suspended him anyway, and it made it a big, long thing. How, how does that happen to Memphis? But Kansas, this guy's originally denied – you can't play. Look, you you openly took money. We know you took money. Or his, and his then, guardians took money, but it's the same. Whatever. Thing. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. And then and then you know, well, okay, we're gonna overturn it and we're gonna let you play now. Like that's that's some crap right there. By the way, I agree. I agree. You think Penny Hardaway saw three years in the future and thought, "I'm gonna, I want this kid in Memphis because I'm gonna take that Memphis job in a couple of years." Not a chance. No. That's so ridiculous. So this makes me hate the NCAA anymore, already more. And if you're not one of the blue bloods, you just don't get to play by the same rules. And, and that that's some that's some just horse crap. But so so this guy's kind of a piece of shit in my mind anyway. <laughs> um, should he be suspended for the rest of his life? I don't know. Probably not. But he got I mean, twelve he, games, so he gets to come back for the season finale and then the uh, the conference tournament and the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that. I don't know that. That's like the worst thing in the world. My biggest problem is not just him. Those Kansas dudes that were kicking the kid while he was on the ground. You know what? Screw yeah, those guys. I was really you surprised. Cheap- they only got two guys suspended. One was I like know. four. Oh, games. I know. I know. And, like, and and some of them were only like two or three games. You yeah. you kicking a man while he's on the ground? That is the cheapest, weakest stuff I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I don't have any place for you. It, stand uh, up and fight. You don't fight somebody, you stand up and you fight them. But you got a big mob and you're on top of a guy that's down, you're just a coward. I you're agree. just a coward. I don't got I have no I have more I have more place for DeRosa swinging the chair at somebody than I do kicking some kid while he's on the ground. And there's four of I you agree. and one of him. Uh Kansas becomes more and more unlikable uh with, yes. with each passing moment of this college basketball season. Obviously, you know, they, they went rogue and they went hard I mean they leaned hard into this uh after they got their NCAA uh notice of allegations uh it, obviously they're not going to get any punishment until after the season's over uh because they got to go through all the appeals and this and that if this team ends up uh hoisting the the uh Naismith trophy like I I just I don't know there's, there's, there's no sports guy. There's no karma in the world if that happens. No, there's, there's. The problem not. is, is there's no great team. Anybody who gets in this tournament can hoist that trophy. Oh, you're right. You're right. I and, mean, and that, Kansas that's, that's is, just a fact. Kansas is one of the better teams. Like, yeah. Now they, they, they have a shot. They're a live shot. Now I wonder where they're going to be at with him missing a lot of the season because, well, he hasn't been great this year anyway so far. So no, he, he hadn't, but uh, but this team was not very good without him last year. Uh, they they True. did not win the Big 12 Conference for the first time in 15 years last year after he got suspended. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. They, obviously, the Big 12 has a lot of great teams. Kansas already got beat at home by Baylor just a couple of weeks ago. 
Uh, Baylor's number one in the country, got a 15-game winning streak. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens with that. Tulsa beat number 20 Memphis last night, 80 to 40. What was Tulsa ranked? Remind me again. Uh, they were unranked. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. First, That's what I first time in 27 years that uh, that an unranked team has beaten a ranked team this badly. The Tigers only hit 16 out of 56 shots. They were only two of 21 from three. Uh, there are problems at Memphis. Uh, this comes right after uh, right after Penny decides to tell the media that he doesn't have he he can't worry about people's feelings right now. He's got to play the best lineup, et cetera, et cetera. The issue that you have with that is you have a ton of heralded freshmen that were all told, or at least all believed, that they were going to be starters and that they are all NBA guys and they were going to be one and dones. And none of them, other than Precious Achua, are that. So without James Wiseman there, and Precious is quiet to himself, the leaders on the team, if there are any, are the guys that are second-year players that aren't as good as the freshmen who are obviously hitting a slump right now. Uh, Memphis got major league problems, man. Well, I mean, the leader of the team has to be Penny. That's the problem. Yeah. We all wondered, can he coach? He can recruit. That's fine. Can well, I think I think he can X's and O's with, with people as well. I think. Are you but, sure? Yeah, oh, I, I, I would guarantee it. But uh, the question here is, the other part of coaching is being able to manage egos and being able to manage a locker room, understand team chemistry, and I don't think he understands this team. That right team now. didn't want to be in Tulsa. They no. didn't want to play that game, and that's on him. Either they that's, weren't that's ready to I'm play, saying. which is on him, or they didn't want to do it, and he couldn't make them do it. I, and I that's on that's him. And it sucks. I want him to do good. I want him to be successful. But that's not a good look. No, it is most certainly not. They uh, they've got a big one on Saturday. SMU comes to town. SMU is fourteen and four on the season. Uh, now SMU has lost some uh, not great games. They lost at East Carolina. You know they 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 lose games like this every now and then. But I mean we'll we'll see what happens here because I mean if they if they get blown out like that at home, whoo that's uh, that's not going to be a good thing. So he's he's got two days. To get this team, you know, to to get back into the swing of things and figure out what he's going to do with them. Uh, let's talk about some of the big games for this weekend. Friday night, you've got Marquette and Butler. Butler uh, started out 15-1, and one, got ranked in the top five. They have lost their last three in a row in the last two by 15-plus points. I don't know what has happened to the Butler Bulldogs, but uh, Marquette is not an easy win. That's, no, and I, th- I think they're getting to the meat of the schedule is the biggest thing. I mean, they they had really big wins in the off season. I mean, they like big. Yeah, wins. but I don't know that any of that stuff matters. I, I if mean, you're you might not, be right. If, if you're not playing when it counts, some of these some of these teams go to these trips. They go to New York. They go to the Bahamas. They go to Hawaii, and they're just there for the party because none of this, this is all preseason, and yeah. nobody cares. Now, you're right. You're right. Uh, so that's Friday night's big game. Saturday, of course, I mentioned SMU at Memphis. Uh, you've also got the Big 12 SEC Challenge. you got Tennessee at Kansas. Uh, Kansas, obviously, got a couple of guys suspended for this one. College game day is going to be there, so you know they're going to talk about all of this stuff. It's going to be I bet game day wishes they could go somewhere else now. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Tennessee is not very good. And that, that's the bad thing about uh, – so college game day in football, it is obviously fluid, right? So they set it up on a week-by-week thing. So you never know where they're going to go until Sunday. But with college basketball, they set game day before the season even starts. Yeah, it's it's planned out. It, it's a little weird to me that they can't just decide because they do it all indoors. It's not like they have to find, you know, logist. And it's you're not dealing with 100,000 people. Nope. So nope. if you're going to do smaller. it, why not just find the best game and, and, and I'm little, sure on paper this looked like a great game before the season started. Yeah. But right now, I would not want to be anywhere close to this this Kansas team. Or this Tennessee team. I mean, obviously, Tennessee well, won Tennessee's the last two good. games. They're, look, they're, are they great? No, but, like, Coach Barnes is a good coach. Like, that's a good program. And I, I would have no problem game day going to a UT game. No, but no problem at all. Going, going to this week's game, you oh, don't yeah. want to be a part of this. No, you're right about that. Uh Dayton at Richmond, which may not seem like a big game, but Dayton is ranked in the top 10. They're number seven 
in uh, in the latest AP and coaches poll. Uh, Richmond quietly doing pretty well. They're fifteen and four on the season. They are in the top forty two in the net. Um, and this is this could be a very interesting game. If Dayton were to lose a conference game, this would probably be it. Uh, so we'll see if uh, if the Flyers can get through that. Uh, Anthony Grant, former Alabama coach, is doing wonderful things at Dayton. Uh, they had 25 assists on 35 made baskets against St. Bonaventure the other night. Just beautiful, beautiful basketball. Obi Toppin, for anybody that has not watched him, that kid can absolutely light it up. He's, uh, he's going to be an NBA guy. So pay attention to Dayton at Richmond. We've got Kentucky at Texas Tech. Uh, neither team has been great this season. Texas Tech got beat on Wednesday night at TCU by like double digits. Um, are, are you surprised at, at this Texas Tech team? I know they lost a lot last year, but I, we all have a lot of I'm, faith in Chris. I'm Bishop. more surprised at TCU. But they're, they're a great story this year. Yeah. Yeah, you're that's, right. That's that's what I'm more surprised about. I knew Texas Tech was going to fall off. They lost some dudes. That was that was the most athletic team I had seen in a tournament in a long time. Yeah, but but part of the, being that athletic is is they had a bunch of transfers. They had a bunch of older guys that weren't you know one and done freshmen, and and they were super athletic dudes. Yeah, you lose that, and you're not a. Kentucky, a you know a, a Tennessee, a Memphis, a Kansas, a Baylor, uh, not a Baylor, um, you know, UConn, all these schools that are that are just historically good. You're just not going to be great every year. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with this. True, true. Uh, Kentucky is playing a lot better uh, since they lost to South Carolina. They got a, Kentucky's uh, going to get better as the year goes on. Yeah. Anybody who thinks Cal Perry is not a good coach and he's just a recruiter is an idiot, and they just hate the man. Yeah. You just hate him, and that's fine. That's fine. He's he's an unlikable person. We talked about unlikable people earlier. Yep. He's easy to not like, but he's a hell of a basketball coach, and all of his teams get far better at the end of the year than they are at the beginning of the year. That's a mark of a good coach, yes. not just a great recruiter. Yes, you are correct. So I'm, I'm very interested to see that. Uh, obviously, that, game I, that, that is a team that you hope if if you don't like them, you hope they find injuries at the end of the year because if they're hot come tournament time, oh, they yeah. could take it all. He's he's that good of a coach, and they they have the pedigree. Oh yeah, they most certainly do. Uh, speaking of pedigrees, number one Baylor travels to Florida, so they they got to go play in the Odome. This is where yeah. game day should be if they could rotate stuff and, and, and flex things. I this agree. is a spectacular game. Yes, yes. And the location is everything. The Florida fans will be fired up for this. That's right. Florida is not ranked, and that's okay. Uh, they, they lost a close one at LSU uh, just a couple of nights ago. At, look, LSU undefeated in conference play, but, but yep. Florida is playing really, really well right now. And Florida's a good team. Even yeah. even when Florida's had down years, they're still a really good basketball team. And, and they're they, never phoning it in. They always seem to play better once it gets to, you know, to tournament time, once it comes to right. big games. Yep. So, February, and, M- March, yeah. Yeah, 100%. And then Sunday. That's, that's the mark of really good coach teams, by the way. I mean, yes. that's it. You're right. You're right. I don't I don't care that you're not playing good in November. Nobody nobody cares. Nobody remembers November or December. No, you're right about that. It does February, have a resume, but but that's about it. Um Sunday's big game, the noon game is Maryland at Indiana and I'm uh, I'm actually watching Indiana and Michigan State right now. Indiana is up by 3 with a minute 48 left in this game. Uh Indiana is sitting at 14 and 4. Maryland 15 and 4. They're ranked in the top 15 right now. Uh, Maryland fans, like this has been a weird year for them. I mean, they they were preseason top ten, yep, and they've played well, you know, like I guess, but but they always seem to lose these games. And their coach, like the fans for Maryland, don't know which way to go with this because they're good enough for their coach to not you know ever lose his job, but they're not good enough to win the Big Ten or even compete really in the NCAA tournament. Like they'll probably make it to the NCAA tournament. But no man. Is, I I think they're going in the right direction. I agree. I mean I, I think Sunday will tell us a lot about them. Um they did get a win over Purdue the other night. Um uh, but yeah, I I mean we'll see. We'll see. It, it's a very strange basketball I, I know it I know this is like a dumb thing and it doesn't equal wins and losses on the court, but some reason I feel like it does SVP moving to the DNC 
you know, that's going to – he's he's closer to Maryland. He's going to be at all those games. I could see them picking up some recruits, man. There's talent in D.C. There's 100%. Yeah, there's, there's and a lot I, of and, I, and, and, and that guy can get them there. So he's, got, wait. he's got an hour show at the end of every night where he goes on national TV and he gets to tell people, come to Maryland, play basketball. Is he – so he moved to what uh, – is he moves he to DC. DC. Him and he's he's now doing his show out of their DC studio. Wow, that is surprising. Okay, that's awesome. Yep, that's I had part no of my idea. take. Just moved into the new studio that they built for him. That's crazy. So, that's crazy. Wait, pardon my take or or? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, oh God, PTI. Oh, pardon the interruption. Yeah, pardon the interruption. I was there. No, you know I was like, I mean? Barstool is working with no, this? What? No, Barstool is that. Well, he would work with those guys. I know he no, wouldn't. Just, that, would, <laughs> that wouldn't shock anybody, so I guess I do need to clear that up. No, you're right yeah, about no. that. Uh, let's. Uh, we got three more topics to hit on. Let's go on and run through these. 